Uh, the next speaker will, is a selected abstract for our presentation and will tell us about new strategies for uh, computational analysis of flow cytometry data. Caroline, welcome. Um, hi, my name is uh, Caroline Dutz and I'm a PhD student in the group of Arjan van Loostrecht. And first I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present our research on uh, artificial intelligence uh, to improve flow cytometry diagnostics um, in MDS. Um, I have nothing to disclose. So first, I think everybody here knows uh, some cases of MDS are challenging to diagnose and sometimes it's difficult to exclude MDS. So um, we use a lot of tools to have the highest possible accuracy. So we use morphology, cytogenetics, we heard a lot about mutational profiling, but we also use uh, flow cytometry, which is a recommended tool in the diagnostic workup of myelodysplastic syndromes. And I want to first get into how we do it now. In our lab, we use the integrated flow cytometry score, which is a combination of the OGADA score, uh, the WELL score, and uh, erythroid parameters identified by the IMDS workgroup. And um, in short, what you see here, for instance, what we do is we look at uh, abnormal uh, expression, but also abnormal subset distribution, ab abnormal uh, maturation. And here you see uh, healthy myeloid progenitors, and here you see MDS myeloid progenitors. And what you see on the MDS myeloid progenitors is CD5 expression, which is a lymphoid marker, and that's aberrant. What you also see here is the neutrophil maturation, and this is how it should be, and here you see some loss of CD11B. And there are several, there are multiple markers that are discriminative between healthy and uh, diseased bone marrow, and what we do is we score it with um, use of a 2SD range of normal bone marrow, and then we get a conclusion, either MDS, no MDS, or we can say. However, uh, we think there is some room for improvement in these scores, because, um, uh, first of all, in accuracy and robustness, I mean uh, sensitivity and specificity in low blast count MDS is around 80 to 85 percent for the IFS. And also in objectivity, I think there's room for improvement. Because I think everybody that works with flow cytometry knows that it's sometimes difficult to say whether a cell is positive or negative. So I think objectivity can be increased. Moreover, user friendliness. It takes us up to an hour to analyze one patient. And it also requires a high level of expertise, which makes it a costly analysis. So we thought maybe we can use artificial intelligence to solve all these challenges. And um, I think everybody knows this, but artificial intelligence is all intelligence that's not biological. And it contains all the uh, things like machine learning and deep learning. And it has actually been proven useful for diagnostics already. So uh, it has been shown that um, artificial intelligence helps diagnosing melanomas better than dermatologists, recognizing pneumonia better than radiologists, and detecting invasive breast cancer better than pathologists. So we thought, why not use it for flow cytometry? Um, so we created an artificial intelligence workflow that consists of three stages. So first, we clean our data, we pre-process our data, um, we tie a gate based on time, we exclude doublets and scatter outliers, we do compensation, transformation and scaling, all, this all happens automatically. Um, the next step would be the computational analysis. With the high quality data, we go to the, um, to the computational analysis, and we use an algorithm called FlowSum, which is a, a clustering algorithm based on self-organizing maps. And here you see a, a FlowSum analysis, a FlowSum spanning tree. And what you see here, all these clusters contain cells with similar expression patterns. And with the plot plies, you can see what the expression is within each cluster. cluster. So for instance, here you see a high uh, CD36 and CD71 expression. So these cells are the erythroid cells. And here you see uh, clusters with high CD34 and high CD117 expression. So these are cells are probably the progenitor cells. Um, what you also see in the flowsome analysis is this, for instance, you also cluster the clusters again in meta clusters. And what we did, uh, per patients, we extracted several features per meta cluster. So we derived uh, relative abundance of the meta cluster, uh, the mean fluorescence intensity, per cl a meta cluster for all parameters in the tube, and also the distribution of these parameters. 
And with these parameters, we go to the next step, and that is classification for disease status. And therefore, we use um, uh, machine learning, an algorithm called Random Forest. And, what random and we feed the Random Forest algorithm all the features derived from the, from the flowsome analysis and also the diagnosis. So this algorithm learns to recognize patterns that are more consistent with MDS or more consistent with controls. So when we feed this uh, random forest a new patient but that doesn't have a disease status yet, it can say it's more like MDS or more like controls. So we clean our data, we generate features based on population detection, and then we classify for disease status. And we do that using our uh, panel of the uh, integrated flow cytometry score. We all use all tube except for tube one because it doesn't contain any unique markers. And we use our patient course. We use a training cohort to optimize this AI workflow based on a five-fold cross-validation. And this uh, training cohort consists of 67 MDS patients with low blast count and uh, non-neoplastic control. So controls with a non-neoplastic cytopenia and uh, healthy donors. And we validated this, so we trained, again, the model based on all files on our training cohorts, and then we validated this on our uh, validation cohort consisting of 57 patients with the same patient characteristics. Um, and the performance in the training cohort using all the six tubes was 90% sensitivity and 96% specificity. Uh, with an area under the curve of 0 0.97 compared to a 82% sensitivity and 87% specificity for the integrated flow cytometry score. And what we thought then is it would be handy to do this with one tube, because for practical advantages in the lab. So what we did is we, select, we, we, uh, we wanted to see which tube performed best uh, solo, solo, and it was tube 4, our erythroid tube, that had an 85% sensitivity and a 95% specificity in the training cohort with an area under the curve of 0 0.96. Um, in the validation cohort, we saw that the accuracy was preserved with a 90% sensitivity and a 93% specificity for the six tubes workflow and a 97% sensitivity and a 95% specificity for the single tube workflow. Um, and also the time needed for analysis was decreased from 60 minutes to 30 seconds to three minutes with the artificial intelligence workflow. And when we use a single tube workflow compared to the IFS, the, uh, the amount of bone marrow and lab materials needed could be decreased with 86%. Um, but now it's kind of a black box, right? You upload your FCS file and the computer says yes or no. But which features does the algorithm use to do, do have the accuracy of the diagnosis. So we, we looked into that. And what we did in a random forest, we looked at the Gini value per parameter and selected the, the, the uh, features with the highest Gini value. And I, we looked into a lot of these features. I think almost all features contributed, like over a thousand features. But I want to get into the most discriminative features for time's sake. And um, the most discriminative feature was derived from this. Meta cluster, and this meta cluster contains cells that have uh, a high CD36 and high CD71 expression and low to intermediate expression of all other parameters in this tube. So, this tells me that these are erythroid cells. So, they are not erythroid sites yet, but they are late erythroid cells. And within these cells, we actually see that the side scatter is the most discriminative feature. So in MDS, the side scatter is higher than in controls. And side scatter, of course, we know it from the neutrophils, but it could also represent cellular complexity in the erythroid cells. So things like, um, hypothetically, um, faculization, multinucleation, and also maybe ring cytoblasts can contribute to the higher side scatter in MDS. Um, what we do know, this is, consistently the most discriminative feature when running this algorithm. Um, so to get to my conclusions, uh, we constructed an artificial intelligence workflow with explainable AI techniques that can um, also show the populations that help to contribute to the accuracy, consisting of pre-processing, population detection, and also classification. And we uh, improve accuracy compared to the IFS, increase objectivity, um, have a very fast, almost real-time diagnosis of 30 seconds to three minutes. And we could also, when using the single tube analysis, reduce the amount of materials. Um, and with that, I want to thank all the people that worked uh, with me on the project, especially the people from the University of Ghent, 
um, that help me uh, with the computational analysis. I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much for a very nice talk. Questions from the audience? Otherwise, I, I will start with one. So, um, so you show that when you, so I was just thinking when you reduce from, from six tubes to one tube, would there be certain subgroups of, of MDS that you would identify with, with less accuracy than, than what you showed in, in the general picture, or, or have you tested for that? Yeah, we did look into, uh, we discriminated, they discriminated between the single lineage, multi-lineage, ring cytoid blasts, no ring cytoid blasts, cytogenic, uh, cytogenetic aberrancies and no cytogenetic aberrancies, and uh, the, the changes in accuracy were very limited within those small subgroups. So no, we didn't see anything. Uh, that's yeah. a very promising lead. Can, can, I, can I ask you one, one yeah. more thing, if you do mind? Uh, how, how much of the clinical input do you put in? Because you said you have to input the diagnosis in there. So we or how much does, if you don't put in any question for diagnosis, if you leave it empty, how does that work with the artificial so, intelligence for these group of patients? Uh, so, you, so the machine learning, the supervised uh, machine learning, it does require that you put in like either you say it's MDS or control, so it has to learn which patterns are that. We also did an unsupervised analysis to see whether using only an unsupervised analysis also already clusters the MDS and the controls, and it does, but the supervised analysis gives uh, and better uh, results. And did you correlate with the morphology again after the, this? Um, you mean uh, after? After you got the integrated flow score based on your AI, did you go back to correlate with the morphology? Did it fit in? You, uh, sorry, I uh, go back with the results of the integrated flow uh, with and the AI workflow and then go back to the morphology, morphology. to see whether we saw differences yeah. or to see. We're doing it, we're evaluating it prospectively now, so in our lab. So I think that's, that gives an answer. So we didn't. We didn't uh, evaluate those results extensively yet, but we've been doing that for a year now, and we actually see um, promising results. OK, thank you. Thanks a lot. I think, thank you. The ne the ne thank you.